Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Nick from MMA Pixels here with Tyler Mead, the welterweight epic champion, state California state champion, and former uh, middleweight epic weight champion. How are you doing, Tyler? Pretty good, man. How's it going? Good. Uh, you just won the, the welterweight state title this past 20, uh, August 24th. Now you're 4-0. and um, Any difference? I mean, you're already the middleweight champion. Do you feel any different after winning this championship? Um, no, I just like going out and fighting people and usually it ends up that I submit them real quick because I have a pretty unique style that nobody's really seen before. So it is what it is. It just kind of happens. It's, it's, it's all the same. Once you're, once you're in there and the cage door closes, it kind of just, you just go on autopilot kind of, and it's like a video game. Your coaches are telling you what to do and you just do it. So you had, uh, three submission victories leading into this fight. How did this fight play out? Um, well, I've been pretty focused on getting my hands better. So I've been trying to strike a lot more and, um, land a couple punches and, uh, he took me down He tried to take me down and it kind of, I dove for a submission position and there was a scramble on the ground. Um, a couple more punches and scramble, scramble. And I ended up getting, a an arm triangle position from the, uh, from the bottom and then, a minute and 30 and it's kind of all happened real quick but try to shoot up a couple triangles from the bottom and yeah you fought uh javan colbin he was the uh former welterweight champion he was defending um have you watched any film on him i mean i watched a couple of his fights um i saw i was at the fight where he fought fields um in his last fight when he won the title um but he's he's fighting guys that aren't the same caliber as me so it's it's not really like he fought one other guy um, before that and, and took him down real quick and submitted him too. But I just think I'm on a different level. So if you take me to the ground, I feel like it's not really a good idea. <laughs> right. Yeah. I was really interested to, in, leading into this matchup because I, I feel his, his jujitsu is really strong as well. So yeah. it was interesting to see. I believe he's a purple belt and you're a purple belt as well. Yeah. Yeah. I just received my purple belt uh, not long ago from uh barry Ishida. right on uh do you compete compete in uh grappling tournaments as well or oh yeah yeah we're a pretty big com uh, competition team uh i compete as much as i can um <laughs> mma is free jiu-jitsu tournaments cost money so i i compete as as much like i said as much as i can um uh we do not too bad i mean we usually i do a lot of subcon uh it's a local tournament here in san diego um the naga um Pretty much anything I can do, you know, we do a lot of the, the bigger tournaments. We do uh, Nogi Worlds every year. We do Worlds every year, Pans, all stuff like that, the big ones. Um, so how's your training look like? Do you have, like, special, like, jiu-jitsu days or, or or a certain class, or is it just all MMA? No, so typically I do um, team practice every day. We, we have the, the MMA pro team practice that we do. Um, all the fighters commence four o'clock every day and that's about an hour and a half. And then that's different things every day of the week that we focus on, uh, grappling, striking, sparring, um, jujitsu, MMA related, you know, wrestling, we divvy up the, the grappling. Um, and then we do, um, five thirty kickboxing and six thirty jujitsu, uh, in the gi. And then typically I go home, <laughs> but it's usually every day of the week. So, um, Saturdays and Sundays I usually just do typically two hours of jujitsu, just gi and no gi. All right. I um I mentioned that you you were the the middleweight champion, but you normally don't compete at middleweight, correct? No, no, I wasn't even um, a middleweight for that fight. I uh, I was fighting. Uh, I was I was supposed to fight on that fight card at 165 because I felt like I was still kind of too small for 170. So. Um, I was making 165 and then I got a phone call the night before the fights, um, basically telling me that my guy had pulled out and he, uh, he got an injury or something, which doesn't seem probable, but either way, it's all you can go on. Um, they told me that I had a fight. The only guy that was left was basically if I could fight out 185 for the title, cause his, his guy got pulled out for some reason as well. Um, I mean, it's only 20 pounds, so I said, whatever, let's do it. It's for a belt. Um, what's the worst that can happen, you know? <laughs> um, so I ended up going in and, and winning that and 
here we are. So. so, I mean, obviously, I guess the weight really wasn't a factor in that fight. No, I mean, I, I, I roll against high level guys in on my team in jujitsu that are bigger than me, smaller than me. Um, I mean, when you, I mean, Barry Yoshida is my, my jujitsu instructor and he's like five foot six, 140 pounds and he'll roll up anybody. <laughs> so when that's the case, how can I look at only 20 pounds? Like I've seen guys that outweigh him by 60, 80, a hundred pounds and he rolls them up like it's nothing. So <laughs> you kind of just have to do what you do and just trust your training and, and trust that everything will turn out and that all the work that you put in was put into the right spots, you know? Right. Oh, so what's next for you? You're four and oh, you're the California state champion. There's not much uh, more you can do as amateur, you know, as far as more titles, uh, you already won the state title, but what's next for you? Um, right now with MMA, I don't really know. I haven't really had a chance to talk to my coaches. Um, there's, there's a couple of different things you could do. Um, but like I said, I haven't really talked to my coaches yet and I kind of just tend to leave it in their hands because they have my, my best interest at heart first and more knowledge on how to do this than I do. So I just, I just trust them. Um, but I mean, Next on the plate, September 9th, I'm doing high rollers, um, two, round two in, uh, in LA. I did the first one in the gi and now they're doing a no gi. So, um, that's going to be, uh, on September 9th, uh, in LA. So that's the next thing, uh, on the go in a couple of weeks. Right uh, on. I, I seen some highlights of, of the, the first one. I think, uh, Joe Schelling was there. Yeah, Joe Schelling, he's in my bracket. He, he, uh, he was on the other side of the bracket for me, but, uh, yeah, he was there. Do you know if there's like uh if it's broadcast anywhere, like online or anything? I don't know. It was on Be Real TV last time. Uh I'm not a hundred percent sure if it, it might be on the same thing. Um but you can go to High Rollers on uh, Instagram or highrollers.com and uh I'm pretty sure it, it will be on there. Um also Big Lawn and uh Matt Stout, those are the guys that run it. So you follow them on Instagram and or check up on them and they'll they'll have the, the information for sure. Um just, I guess, based on, um, like, competition level, anything different by, by doing that, you know? I mean, like, because like, you guys you smoke, what, one joint together before and then roll? Yeah, and then you go out and roll. No, I mean, it's not really it's not really crazy. It's just one of those things where it's kind of like a, you know, I mean, if you've ever trained and, and burned before or, or anything like that, it's kind of depending on, I mean, the people that are going there to do it are, probably have done it before so it's not crazy out of the, the ordinary it's not like you know dinner for schmucks where you bring somebody that's never been there before you know <laughs> <laughs> right right yeah i just i figured i'd ask it uh yeah. more probably just like a bonding thing you know yeah, it's cool you know you just, it's like you know it's just like a different vibe for for a tournament like that you know like everybody's always going out there like oh well this one's like cool bro let's let's roll and then you go out there and all of a sudden then you're trying to work that place <laughs> right and um is what's the uh if you win the tr the tournament is there like a trophy or anything uh last time there wasn't there was um hopefully weed there, right yeah you you want a pound of weed <laughs> oh is that what yeah oh. yeah, yeah you want a pound of weed yeah right on that's cool is it by like some famous you know company or just uh no there was a couple different companies there was a company reserve i'm pretty sure is the one that i remember that was uh that was handing it out i'm pretty sure there's a there was there was a couple of different ones though i do believe i just remember reserve was the one that i saw um that one of the more notable guys uh received his prize from right on that's cool um so did anyone help you out for this this fight coming up like uh sponsors or anyone you want to sh shout out that were like supported <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I have Diablo brand that, uh, they give me my gear, my geese and, and, uh, my rash guards and shorts and, and training gear and stuff like that. Um, golden state greens, it's a dispensary here in, uh, in San Diego. They have, uh, they help me out with my recovery with CBD products and, and, uh, rubs and, and, and stuff like that. Um, flow force rehab, it's a rehabilitation center up. They do a lot of sports, sports stuff and they keep my, keep me strong, keep me going. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Twim's clothing, just uh, 
started with them. So it'll be a, a good relationship moving forward. Right on. That's awesome. Um, that's quite a bit of sponsorships. Do you, you think you got those from fighting or for more for like the jujitsu and grappling? Um, well, I, <laughs> it's weird. I won the, the Diablo brand. I just won a gi in a contest online. And then, uh, it was like the only cool gi I had with the patches from the gym. So I'd wear it all the time and I would just win when I would compete. So every time I post a picture, I tag them. And then after I won like a whole bunch of gold medals, um in their gi they just started sending me more stuff and then it's just been kind of like there's nothing like like official or anything like that it's just kind of like you know he just sends me stuff and we just you know i just rep his you know right on that's cool i uh i know another fighter who has the same same type of situation they actually were buying the gear and just using it you know they really enjoyed it and they were posted pictures and then then from there they got a sponsorship and so it seems like that's yeah. the way to go. I mean, if you really like something, you know, go out, spend a little bit of money, get it. Or like you said, you won the competition or the contest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely the best the best way to go about it. I mean, you got to figure out what kind of stuff you like and then obviously get the stuff you like. And if, you know, I mean, stuff happens naturally. It's the best way to kind of to just kind of like let it fall in line. They usually, you know, if they like you, then you're not searching them. They're not going to take advantage of you. They're just trying to, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, it, it's it's a trade. It's a business. So, I mean, you got to do your part and represent. And I'm sure if, you know, if you're losing everything, I don't I don't know how many sponsors you'll be getting. But yeah, yeah. And, uh, where, where can the fans connect with you on social media? Uh, on Instagram, I uh, Squid Vicious uh, BJJ. Um, and then uh, Twitter are the same. I'm not really a huge Twitter guy. But uh, mostly Instagram is what I'm on, and then Facebook. Um, it's Tyler Van Kill. Right on. Well, I appreciate your time. California State Champion. Um, September 9th, High Rollers, too? Yep. No, right me. Can't Big wait tournament. to watch you compete there. Thank you for your time, Tyler. Hey, thanks, man.